Muscular dystrophy is a genetic muscle disease. Uh, it is a disease that affects the muscle cells and is genetically inherited. And the way it affects the muscle cell is through affecting the dystrophin gene. It's one of the largest or probably the largest gene in the body. I'm going to address today is the topic is a discussion between what is myotonic dystrophy versus muscular dystrophy. To exactly answer this question right away, myotonic dystrophy is just one form of muscular dystrophy. Muscular dystrophy is a large category in you know, various different forms of muscular dystrophies. So there is the myotonic dystrophy, there's Duchenne muscular dystrophy, there is facioscapulohumeral dystrophy, FSHD, uh, and so on and so forth. There are some diseases which have Japanese name because only they have described them. So it's a very big category of diseases, which is called muscular dystrophies. And uh, one of them is myotonic dystrophy. And maybe uh, you were wondering about, when asking question, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And it's just one other form of muscular dystrophy is Duchenne versus myotonic muscular dystrophy. And of course, there are differences. And there's differences with the FSHD and other, other diseases. Mm -hmm. But let's first step back and ask, what is a muscular dystrophy? So muscular dystrophy is a genetic muscle disease. Uh, it is a disease that affects the muscle cells and is genetically inherited. And the way it affects the muscle cell is through affecting the dystrophin gene. It's one of the largest or probably the largest gene in the body, dystrophin gene. And the role of the dystrophin gene is to create a complex to stabilize the membrane muscle cell membrane layer so it creates kind of a architecture or skeleton under the muscular membrane to try to stabilize it let me see if i can bring some pictures up because usually it's easier to so just drop in G complex because the largest gene is probably the largest protein structure too so i'll just try to pull up some images here so this is dystrophin associated glycoplatin. So basically, all it's showing you that these are the double bilipid bilayer are the membrane, cell membrane, and then cell membranes are anchored with these structure, these wavy fibril structure. And there is this gene on the inside which stabilizes them or anchors them. This is the lipid bilayer that has these um, sarcoglycan complexes in the membrane. And then they uh, are anchored with laminin or lamina protein, laminar protein, and then they have these dystrophin complex associated with it. So it's just a membrane structure, kind of a protein that stabilizes the membrane. Now in muscular dystrophy, when the dystrophin gene is, is impaired, uh, that this dystrophin sarcoglycan, dystroglycan complex is impaired and the muscle uh, membrane uh, doesn't have a good stability. And what ends up happening is that the muscles then slowly starts degenerating and slowly dying. So you get in muscular dystrophies, you get a degeneration of muscle. And then when muscle degenerates, the body reacts by adding a lot more energy in form of fat reserve into the muscle. So there's fatty infiltration of the muscle and the muscle cells are dying. And when muscle cells are dying, when we do um, microscopy of the muscles, we have type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers. There is some alteration. There's a normal balance of 1 and 2 one is faster and, and quickly fatigues, another is slower, but has a lot more stamina. And there is alteration of those fibers uh, in, in the biopsy. Uh, but in general, you get a lot of fibrous tissue, fatty tissue, and the muscle cells uh, themselves become less and less. But eventually, the muscle bulk goes down, muscle strength goes down, muscles become less pliable, it becomes more scarred, it becomes more tight, and so on and so forth. So it's a gradual loss of muscle mass. And Gradual means years, but it could be a few years, could be many years, and that it depends on which disease uh, of muscular dystrophy. Is it myotonic? Is it machine? And so on and so forth. It also depends on how bad is the disease, you know, how what how much, what what genetic damage has happened. Because it's such a large gene, there's various different forms of genetic alteration that can cause damage to it. So although you get in the same disease like myotonic dystrophy, the underlying genetic cause of the myotonic dystrophy is not one, it's more than one. There's many different forms of myotonic dystrophies. And similarly, very different disease, different forms of Duchenne muscular dystrophies and so on and so forth. Now, I'm not gonna go into all the details, but to give you a few, uh, maybe one or two different points. So for example, in myotonic dystrophy, clinically speaking, the way we suspect it 
is that we look for a pattern of muscular dystrophy, which is a relatively younger age of onset, slowly degenerating muscles, which are causing weakness. It's a non-neuropathy, non pattern of weakness. So it's a lower motor pattern, but non-neuropathy. So lower motor meaning that there's no upper motor neuron sign. But a non-neuropathy meaning that there may be preserved reflexes for a long time. Uh, the muscle is not in a neuropathic distribution. Uh, it's more proximal or equal proximal distal or so kind of a pattern, which varies from you know from, from disease to disease. Facioscapular humeral is different. Regime is different. Myotonic is different, so on and so forth. But there is some a muscular dystrophy pattern, slowly degenerating muscle disease kind of a pattern uh, in a patient. And then you look for some other features. Uh, sometimes age of onset helps, sometimes family, family history helps, but there are some clinical signs we sometimes look for. So myotonic dystrophy is called myotonic dystrophy because there's myotonia with it. Myotonia is excitable muscle that goes into to a tonic spasm. So a myotonic muscle will be that if muscle is resting, let's say my thinar muscle, if it's resting, if I suddenly tap it, it excites the muscle because the cell membrane is not chemically stable or electrically stable, it will create a discharge into the muscle. Uh, same as if a nerve nerve was activating the muscle. And the discharge spreads along the muscle abnormal muscle membrane and will create a muscle contraction. Calcium going into the muscle and causing contraction of the muscle. So when I excite it, it will contract. And uh, myotonia is when there is a spasm or sustained contraction of that muscle. So you, you it contracts and then stays contracted for a while before it lets go. So that is a myotonia. So you can literally tap on the thinar with your fingers, usually with a hammer, reflux hammer, percussion hammer, and you get a, a myotonia. You can have myotonia in other places too, but thinar muscle usually have a distal uh, first, then proximal uh, progression and myotonic dystrophy. So you often start with testing on thinar muscles uh, or uh, antibialis anterior muscle, shin muscle, uh, and then forearm muscles before going back into biceps or something like that. But myotonic contraction, which may or may not move the limb. So myotonic contraction doesn't have to move the limb. You can have a myotonic contraction in the forearm or in a biceps, which doesn't cause the limb to move. You just see the muscle contract, but it's, it's a weak contraction. It's a weak muscle. So it doesn't move the limb. It is not required that a movement happens, but you just see the muscle contract, pull up, goes into a tonic spasm and then slowly lets go after a few seconds uh, and release. And that will be a myotonia and myotonia is a feature of myotonic dystrophy.